Hello there, have you been reading the PMBOK guide? Found it to be very heavy, cumbersome? Maybe you're just starting. Let's talk about the 49 processes of the PMBOK guide 6th edition. We're going to do this pretty quick. We've got a longer version out there on YouTube. To find the longer version, click on the I button at the top right corner of this video to view the 45 minute version. There are 49 processes in the PMBOK guide 6th edition and they're broken out by process group. These process groups are not meant to be done in linear rotation. Some people read the PMBOK guide and they go through the order of the chapters and they think project management is meant to be in that fashion. No, it's not. Project management is extremely situational, dynamic and iterative. For that reason, do not think of the processes as being in any strict order. In the real world, things happen out of order quite a lot, but there is some logic to what should happen at a high level first before other things happen. So the first thing that should happen on any project is the initiating of the project. So in the initiating process group, the very first process talked about in the PMBOK guide is develop project charter. This is where the project is authorized. There is an authorization document known as the project charter that is an output of this process. Also, we begin to document constraints and assumptions at a high level and then we go into detail. For that reason, the assumption log is also an output of the Develop Project Charter process. Bear in mind that Develop Project Charter could happen at predefined points throughout the project to authorize phases or other segments within the project. Identify stakeholders, our next process, is where stakeholders are identified and analyzed. This is not a one-time event, but it happens all throughout the project. And the major output of this is called a stakeholder register. As part of analyzing stakeholders, the project manager should look at their level of power, their level of interest, level of influence, probably determine what their attitude is. Hence, the stakeholder queue that will analyze their attitude, their power, and their interest, for example. The next process group is the planning process group. There are 24 processes here, and this is 24% of your exam. The first process here is develop project management plan. This is where the project management plan is put together. The project management plan is developed. This is a process that integrates everything else that happens after it, but it's also a process where direction and focus is created for everything that will happen after this process. In other words, direction and focus for how subsidiary plans will be developed, their look, their feel, and so on. The next process here takes us to another knowledge area called the scope management knowledge area. And this process is called plan scope management. Plan scope management is where the scope management plan that defines how to manage scope is developed. The scope management plan also defines how scope will be fleshed out in defining the scope and creating a WBS. Also from this process we get an output known as the requirements management plan. The next process here is collect requirements. This is where requirements are actually collected we have a requirements traceability matrix that is an output of this process. And this maps requirements to their origin. It could be a rather useful document. The next process is known as define scope. In define scope, this is where we examine what is an inclusion and what is an exclusion for this project. This is documented in a scope statement, also called a project scope statement. Within the project scope statement, we also know what the major characteristics of the deliverable are. We have a deliverable description, and we are also taking another look at those constraints and assumptions to make sure that the entire scope of work needed to meet the requirements previously defined is all mapped out. The next process is create WBS. WBS stands for work breakdown structure, and this is a hierarchical decomposition of the project, the work to be done on the project, and it's in the form of a tree structure. It looks very much like a family tree. The next process here is plan schedule management. In plan schedule management, 
This is where the team creates a plan for how to develop and manage the schedule. There are lots of scheduling tools, but we need to be intentional about how our schedule is developed. How many people will be involved? When will it take place? How often will these tasks in the schedule be reviewed? The next process here is define activities where these tasks in the schedule are first of all listed out. The major output is an activity list. The next process is where we sequence the activities by putting them in the logical order of occurrence. In the real world, people might define the activities and sequence them right away, but these are two distinct processes in the PMBOK guide. The next process is estimate activity durations. Based on an understanding of the resources available, which happens in a different process, we are then able to estimate activity durations for the different tasks. The next process is develop schedule. This is where the entire schedule comes together and all of the information that we have gleaned so far about milestones, tasks, and the durations is all put together into a project schedule. When that schedule is approved by management or stakeholders, it is then known as a schedule baseline. Let's go to another knowledge area, the cost knowledge area. The first process here, plan cost management. Plan cost management is where a plan is developed for how cost will be estimated, budgeted, and managed. In the next process, we then estimate the cost for the various work packages or tasks in the project. The next process is determine budget. In determine budget, those cost estimates from the previous process are then rolled up into a final total amount. The next process is plan quality management. In this process, we obtain a quality management plan that defines the quality standards that need to be adhered to on the project, and also a plan of action for meeting those quality standards or targets. The next process takes us to a new knowledge area, resource management. This first process in resource management is plan resource management, and we obtain a resource management plan. The resource management plan is a plan for how to estimate resources, acquire resources, develop the human resources, and manage the human resources, as well as control the physical resources. The next process here is estimate activity resources. This is where the resources needed for the project, human equipment, materials, supplies, and facilities are estimated. The next process is a new knowledge area here. This is the communications knowledge area, and the first process is plan communications management. This is where a plan is developed for how communications will take place on the project. How will communications flow from one source to the other? This is where the communications management plan is worked on, and inside that we have the what, when, why, and how of communications. The next process takes us to the risk management knowledge area. The first process in risk management is plan risk management. This is where the risk management plan for how risks will be identified, analyzed, and monitored is created. Also, the process for responding to risks should also be decided upon. Who needs to be called upon? What are the roles and responsibilities for risks? All of that is defined in the risk management plan. The next process is identify risks. This is where any risks, positive or negative, are identified. The next process is perform qualitative risk analysis. This is where the team analyzes the risks from a qualitative standpoint. Think about this as a multiplication of a risk rating, such as the probability rating and the impact rating. The probability rating times the impact rating will give a risk score, hence a qualitative analysis of the risks. The next process, on the other hand, is perform quantitative risk analysis, and this is where the team analyzes the risks from a monetary standpoint, a resource hour standpoint, or some other quantitative measure. The next process is plan risk responses. This is where the team plans how to respond to the risks. Will the risks be mitigated, accepted, exploited, escalated, so on and so forth. There are five strategies for positive risks and five strategies for negative risks. 
You definitely want to know these for your exam. The next process here is plan procurement management, taking us into the procurement knowledge area. In plan procurement management, the team creates a procurement management plan that defines how procurement will be managed on the project. Last but not least in planning, we have planned stakeholder engagement. In planned stakeholder engagement, this is where a plan is developed for how stakeholders will be engaged throughout the project. And that concludes this initial introduction.